Welcome to the channel. I'm James Salvatore and this is the 2022 Audi Q755. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the tech features, I'm gonna talk about how practical it is, and then I'm gonna drive it and share my thoughts on it. But before we get into it, if you're a car person, consider subscribing to the channel. As you can see, I do a lot of cool stuff. So you won't wanna miss out. With that said, let's get right into the video. is Audi's full-size SUV. Starting at $57,500, it features seating for up to seven, cutting edge tech, and aggressive styling. There are five different trim levels available. Today's tester is the 55 Premium Plus. It features a three liter turbocharged V6 producing 335 horsepower and 369 foot-pounds of torque mated to an eight-speed torque converter transmission. It gets 18 miles per gallon in the city and 23 on the highway for an estimated combined 20 miles per gallon. With the third row seats up, you get 14.2 cubic feet of cargo storage. And with the press of a button, the third row goes down allowing for up to 35 cubic feet. And if you put the second row of seats down, you have a maximum of 69 cubic feet of cargo storage. Compared to its competitors, the Q7's tech is very advanced and straightforward and easy to use. As you can see, you do have a virtual display when it comes to your driver's gauge cluster. You hit the view button to maximize or minimize the gauges. Uh, you could scroll through vehicle functions. You could display album artwork or whatever radio station you're listening to. If you're not using Apple CarPlay, you can make phone calls directly from the screen and you could display a full map, which most of you are probably gonna do most of the time. You can see there, very nice, very clean, lag-free. I like it. And you can see with the rest of the dashboard, the infotainment system and the screens in general, Audi is really stuck to a very minimalist approach here, which I think really works in this car. You can see you have your infotainment system up here and the screen below controls your HVAC and uh, various auxiliary functions like fun fact, the garage door opener is actually programmed into the screen rather than like say a button on the mirror like almost every other car uh, you have downhill assist control you can scroll through your drive mode settings and uh, getting to the user interface with the infotainment system it's kind of set up kind of mimics like an android device you can see you have app tiles which are pretty straightforward to use that's the home screen and uh, when it comes to the stock map software, you could see it's using Google Maps. You could choose to turn on the satellite map, which is nice. You could see, get a nice view there. It's very fluid, very lag free. You could tell that they've spent money with the processor they put in here. And the camera system in here is really impressive. You could see you have the nice 3D camera system. You could zoom in and out. You have the graphic of the car. Very nice overall, and you can go to individual cameras if you want as well. You can kind of scroll around the vehicle, like say if you want to see over the bumper, over the uh, front end, very useful. And you have wireless Apple CarPlay, which is nice. You can see it's very fluid, lag-free, no complaints there for sure. The second row of seats is very comfortable. There's plenty of leg room, plenty of headroom, And the nice thing is you can slide the seat forward and backwards if you choose to, and you can recline it, which not all cars have. But the third row of seats is just meant primarily for children. It's very, very small back there. I have to say off of first impressions, this really doesn't drive how I expected it to in a good way. Most of these full-size SUVs that I review, like the GLS, the X7 and whatnot, they, Drives nice around town, they're comfortable, they're refined, exactly how you'd expect, right? You know, nothing really to talk about. However, the Q7 is actually pretty nimble and like sporty feeling, so shockingly. I mean, this is a full-size SUV, you definitely do feel the weight, but the steering is pretty responsive. You know, you have a little bit of input and there's actually some transfer onto the road, whereas the average SUV of this size, you know, you, you have steering input, but it's a very vague, disconnected feeling. So that makes for a more engaging driving experience and you can can't, it carries speed uh, around corners and, and actually have a good time doing it, um, which is shocking for something this size. 
visibility in this is great. Um, one thing that all Audis have, and you know, Volkswagen Auto Group products just in general, like in Porsches and uh, whatnot as well, have amazing visibility. Um, and this is no exception to that. So looking out the windshield of this, the way it's raked and how low it is with the dash, you're kind of like looking right down to the road, which gives you a very sporty feel. And uh, looking out the windows, you have these kind of like little quarter windows here. So it's like nothing's really a blind spot in this, which is very nice. You could see through the mirror out the back. A lot of car auto manufacturers today make you rely on the blind spot monitoring and all the uh, safety assistance features. This has all that, of course, but you have more of a sense of confidence in this because you could see everything without having to rely on that solely, where in some cars you can't even see out the rear really at all. Um, so definitely points for this on that. And uh, the transmission's also pretty responsive too. It's smooth, it doesn't buck at all. Um, especially paired with some of these uh, smaller motors, sometimes these transmissions kind of stumble over themselves and they're kind of jerky or the shifts aren't smooth. Definitely not the case here. However, the area that I think this is lacking when it comes to the driving experience is definitely the power. Something this heavy and something this big needs more. Um, it's just, this isn't enough. It's smooth and going around town, like, you know, just average, normal, very relaxed driving, yes, it's fine. But if you gotta pass somebody or you're getting on the highway and you punch it, like, it's just, I just punched it right there. It's, it really doesn't have much. It downshifts and then it's like you're waiting. It's like, push me, I'm coming. Which, oddly enough, I feel like it doesn't even match the car almost because it handles very nicely and it, it feels sporty, but then it's, it's lacking on power. I think that Audi should really go electric with these. I think these are the vehicles that would really benefit from having an electric power plant because they can add more power uh, to it and have more torque down low, which would definitely help move something of this size. But to come back to the point that I made earlier about how nicely it handles, we're approaching like a fairly windy turn and I actually am enjoying hustling this a little bit. Now, keep in mind, I'm not like really, really pushing this, but it is actually really satisfying to put through corners. And I really can't say that a lot about pretty much 85% of the SUVs that I review. And another area where this excels, if you care about that, is braking. The pedal is uh, has a lot of bite up top good modulation and you definitely have confidence that if you have to make an emergency panic stop that this is going to stop in a reasonable distance which can't be said for everything so to some of my thoughts on the q7 driving experience i would say when it comes to handling and braking feel um, it's very satisfying right on point with where it needs to be and i would say it's best in class visibility is great you can see everything out of this very conf very confidently. Um, it really makes for a nice driving experience. The cabin feels very spacious and not overcrowded. Where it, it definitely isn't good is with the power, like I said earlier, it just doesn't have enough for something this size. And especially with the money that you're spending at this price point and in this trim level, there should be more power. This just, it doesn't cut it. But it still is very smooth and going around town you know it, it, going around town you'll be just fine it's just for those moments like say when you need to pass somebody or you're getting on the highway and you need to merge you need something with just a bit more power to get this thing out of its way and when it comes to the tech if i had to describe it in one word i would say functional everything in here is straight to the point and it doesn't take a lot of focus off the road as i said earlier which is very important when you're driving some of these infotainment systems in these cars yes they have all these cool different designs and looks and whatnot but they're extremely distracting you know if you're going down the road and you got to fumble through all these different things to get to the function you're trying to get to that's not good everything about the driver's information center is very simple and easy to use you know remember you only have four menus minimizing the gauges and maximizing them is very easy I like that the infotainment system, Audi's user interface, everything is big, clear, and easy to read. 
I'm never like second guessing or spending too much time looking down at this. Um, the only area where I may have liked to have seen a few buttons is with the HVAC controls, but I understand that they were trying to go for that modern design, so I'm not gonna knock them for that because that comes down to preference. And when it comes to practicality, you get out of this exactly what you would expect to. It's very comfortable, front and second row, and the third row of seats is perfect for kids. Uh, like I said earlier, you can't fit adults back there, but that wasn't really the intended purpose of those. And you have plenty of storage space if you need to put things in and load them if you put down the third row seats and the second row seats. So overall practicality, great. So with all that said, should you buy it or should you pass on it? I would definitely say buy it because even though it's lacking on power, everything else really does make up for that as an overall package between the technology, the looks, the presence, and the practicality. I would say that this is a really good SUV overall and definitely worth your time to check out. Just keep in mind some of the things I said and you know, you'll use that to make your own decision. That sums up things for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't done so yet, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out on next week's video. Before I go, I'd like to say a special thanks to my friends down at Audi of Fairfield, Connecticut for making today's video possible. They're an awesome, super helpful, friendly group of people to work with. And if you're in the area, be sure to check them out. I'm gonna leave their contact information in the description below so you can do so. And with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video.